Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we're taking a look at what I think has probably got to be the most unique, out there, outlandish Kaiser model I've ever seen. And this one here is the Kaiser Mini Paragon. How this became the Mini Paragon, I have no idea. But that is what we have here. Uh, a very unique offering from Kaiser and one that I am very excited to bring you a full review on. Now, uh, before we go any further into this review, let's take a look at some overall specs on this behemoth of a knife right here. We have an overall length of 9.37 inches, a blade length coming in at 3.75 inches, and a blade thickness of 130 thousandths. Blade width on this guy, get ready for it, 1.86 inches, almost 2 inches wide, very wide, like just, oh my god, just a spear of a blade. Uh, we have a compound grind with a handle length coming in at 5.62 inches, a handle thickness at 573 thousandths, a handle width of 1.09 inches, and a handle material of some pretty impressive micarta for what it all has going on with it. We'll touch on more on that when we get to the handle and ergos. Um, but we have a liner lock locking mechanism with a very solid lockup. And of course, a right hand only tip up carry with a very unique pocket clip that we'll also talk a little bit more about when we get to those handle and ergos. A weight coming in at 6.91 ounces, so it is a tad on the heavier side. Um, designed by RS Knife Works and a price of kind of surprising. I mean, you're getting a lot of knife here for 119 bucks, so not too bad at all. And uh, I'm gonna try to give you guys some size comparisons. But like I said, I don't really like the so the combination of this knife with the blade and the handle, it's it's definitely out there. I'm gonna start off with something that I think everyone just knows the length of. <laughs> the Spider Co Shaman. And as you can see, it makes the shaman look short. Uh yeah. Well even I don't think the, the camera perspective really doesn't change much. I mean you can still see, well, it does change a little. Um, but it is definitely, I would say, eh, about uh, half inch, half inch to a quarter of an inch shorter uh, than the Mini Paragon. And in terms of handle, really not super comparable, but it really, yeah, nah, no. Nah. Ergos are tough to match on this one. Um, here's a couple other kind of different knives. <laughs> the SOCOM Elite from Microtech and the ZT0850. So there, that's more comparable in overall length. Uh, the 850 is almost the identical length, but again, there's just not a whole lot relating any of these knives together. If I if I had to pick any knife to compare the Ergos with it, it might be the 850. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the 850 just in terms of like... The, the, the finishing on the ends of the handle and the overall width. So it, it's kind of like the 850 in terms of ergos, but it's also not too close. So I, I wouldn't go uh, comparing them too closely. But yeah, this is just a knife that is very much out there. Uh, but one that I do enjoy from an aesthetic standpoint. Um, I know some people are going to complain about the recurve, that it's not going to be for them. I get that. Um, but... This knife, I don't know if it's meant to be a true everyday carry. I think it's meant to just be a knife that you carry sometimes to enjoy and get a kick out of and just, you know, uh, I don't know, feel cool with because it is definitely out there, definitely unique and with a very beastly blade uh, with a very interesting grind in terms of behind the edge thickness. Uh, we're really varying here. Up here towards the tip where the belly is, we're looking at 28,000. So definitely a, a chunkier, thicker edge to do more just bulk brute work with. But then when you get down here to the recurve area, you're looking at 19,000. So definitely more favorable on the slicey side, especially with that super high flat grind. Um, or that may be a very, 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 very subtle hollow grind, but I think for all intents and purposes, we're going to call it a flat grind. And then even down here, you're kind of getting there in the middle. You're looking around like 23 thousandths, I believe, because you see that slight difference in thickness. It's not nearly as thick uh, down here as it is up there, though, though. So we're kind of in the middle down here, and I don't think that's going to really make that big of a difference at all. Um, I think they just did that from a manufacturing standpoint. But it does give it one extra little area to look at and be like, oh, there's just another line on this blade. Because there really is lines all over the place 
that again, I've said it before, this is like a video game knife for me. Um, still a very useful knife, of course. It, it, it cuts great, but uh, definitely more that I relate to just like straight up out of the video game, which is kind of cool, which I think is one of the real selling points for it because you see a lot of classic drop points. You see a lot of, you know, nice tactical tantos, but you don't see many knives like this. So very nice, unique standpoint of that. But another thing that I really like about this knife, and I wasn't sure how much I would like at the beginning because it was so big, was the flipper tab on this guy. But the flipper tab serves a lot more purposes than just flipping the knife. Um, most importantly, it protects the blade from cutting your finger off because you need, you definitely need a finger stop on this guy because the action is very drop shutty. And without this flipper tab, that recurve would be uh, slicing into your finger. So definitely needs to be there. At first, I kind of wish the flipper tab was removable so you'd have that option. But believe me, you would never want to remove this flipper tab. Um, for the reason of that, of the flipper protecting your thumb, but also because while you can middle finger flick this, well, well we'll talk more about it when we get to the action. Um, but overall, just an extreme beastly blade that is attached to a handle that is a very different, very contrasting from the blade. I really love this combination of a wider blade and a narrow handle, especially the way the blade connects to the handle, because what you get from an ergonomical standpoint is something that is surprisingly fantastic in the hand, because this area right up here where I'm moving my thumb and where my index finger is, I like the way it blooms. All of a sudden, I mean, you're you're about an inch thick all the way up, all the way up, and then it just blooms. And it gives you a really nice point to get a secure, pressurized grip on this handle and really push down with your thumb. The thumb ramp is extremely comfortable. Even without jimping, it still gives it a nice, smooth comfort. And the way this is locked in my hand, while I don't think I'd want jimping here, it might be nice to have jimping, like different jimping up here, but still, that's still not really necessary because this is the primary grip for this knife right here in your hand and that's the way pretty much everyone's going to use it now you could also do you know it's such a wide blade you could always go up and do a, a kind of a pinch blade grip like this and really utilize this edge of the recurve right here you could also open boxes just fine like that so it really is a pretty useful blade um it's just a matter of whether or not you want to carry something this big in your pocket um, which I personally would 100% do. Not on every single daily basis, but I would have no problem carrying this knife. I carry it for a couple days and it actually rode surprisingly okay in the pocket. That's because of this pocket clip that not only, I maybe I'm just crazy, but I really like this pocket clip design on this knife. And it goes against a lot of things that I normally don't like. Like I usually don't like that big of a clip. And this is definitely a big clip on this knife. But the way it's designed, how it goes in and out of the pocket, it sits a little higher out of the pocket. It gives you something to hold on to. But more than anything, it disappears in the hand. This feels like almost a fixed blade in your hand because you just don't feel the clip at all. It does an excellent job of disappearing in the hand. And that is very important for me, especially on a bigger knife. You just, you don't want to feel that clip. On a medium-sized knife, sometimes you can get away with an uncomfortable clip, but on a real small knife or a real big knife, the clip can become a huge factor if it's not designed right and comfortable in hand. Uh, but no worries here with this one. It's good to go. Another thing that I really like about this, the fit and finish on this handle is the micarta in general. You know, there's all this milling here and the milling is done extremely well. And that's hard to do on micarta. You can easily get um, some 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 fuzzy, nasty areas with this with these small lines being milled, but it came out great. I will say on the clip side, there's a couple fuzzy spots here on the micarta, which is not uh, you don't see that a lot with Kaiser knives. But every once in a while, I mean, and some of it isn't necessarily the quality of the micarta. It's just how thin they got it. Like right down here, you see it getting a little fuzzy there. Um, but it's just a real thin point, and that's really hard to avoid with micarta, especially when it's not always up against something. Like down here, the micarta is connected to the liner really well, so you don't have to worry about a fray point. But up here where the liner lock is, sometimes you can get a little fraying there. But over time, that could, is also something that could smooth out and patina over and look just fine. But the overall quality of micarta and milling on this is, as usual, very pleasing. Uh, really like the backspacer here that's also done in micarta. Kind of gives it a nice, almost three-dimensional look sandwiched in between these liners, which are 
beefy, beefy liners. This knife in general really is a brute. Um, <clears throat> it's running on bearings, so, you know, it, the bearings help the action, but people will always say, you know, a knife on a blade on washers is always going to be a little more, you know, durable, hard use type knife. And I get that, no disagreement there. But you still can't uh, deny the fact that having liners this thick with a backspacer this long is going to provide some very good strength to this knife in general, especially with such a wide base up here. Uh, this is a very nice uh, brute of a knife at a very good price. So there's a lot of features of this handle that contrast from the blade, but also work very well with the blade. And I really enjoy that about this knife. Um, another thing that I really love is the liner lock access with this. Very, very easy to break that lock and have that blade come down. Um, it would be nice if there was a little beveling there, but even without the beveling, it's still kind of, it's still lightly chamfered. So it's by no means, it's, it's super smooth. There's no real pressure there. Beveling would be nice, but at the end of the day, it still breaks very easily. And this blade, I mean, you literally break it and then just rotate the handle and the blade closes on you. So very, very smooth action on the way out or on the way in and on the way out, it's just as good. And this was really impressive with this knife too, because with a blade this big and this wide and the weight in this blade, the detent gets really hard. You gotta have you gotta have a detent that's just right. One that is strong enough, but also not too strong. And this flipper, I love this flipper, how I can light switch it, but then you can also, even with all the weight behind it, the detent's just right to where you can put enough pressure to just push button it, and the blade, the blade comes out so easily. Love push buttoning this blade. And the, uh, the flipper overall, I mean, if you keep push buttoning it over and over and over again, you will start to feel a little irritation on your index finger, but that's kind of to be expected with such a, a big, heavy blade. But I can go a lot longer than I think before it starts to really take its toll. And when that happens, then I can just light switch it and it comes out just fine. Um, the one surprising thing with this knife is the middle finger flicking action, while it's good, I prefer flipping this, and I'm pretty shocked saying that because when I saw this cut out here, I was like, oh, it's going to be just like, you know, the Mini Roach and just like all these other Kaiser knives that have excellent cutouts and it flicks out great. And as you can see, I'm doing it, um, and I can do it pretty much no problem. I mean, the middle finger flicking um, from, a you know, just an overall can you do it standpoint, yes, you can easily do it. But my issue with the middle finger flicking on this is the, the cutout is a little farther away from the handle. So you kind of feel like you're reaching your middle finger out there a little more. And that detent, while the detent is very, very nice from a flipping standpoint, the detent's about as good as it can get from a flipping standpoint, in my opinion. It feels a little stronger when you go to middle finger flick it. So you got to get used to it. It, I wouldn't consider it a perfect detent for a middle finger flicker, but that's the trade-off, right? I mean, you got to be able to have uh, one form of deployment that's good to go, and if you lighten the detent and made it like perfect from a middle finger flicking standpoint, then you would really have no point in having the flipper there because the flipper, like, you would feel like there's almost no detent when you go to flip it. Um, and you got to have a flipper there because, like I said, the flipper also works as a very important safety feature to keep the blade from cutting you. So I understand why Kaiser did it, and I completely agree with it. And I think they did as good of a job with it as they could because it has excellent flipping action and good middle finger flicking action. You just got to be okay with a cutout that's a little farther away from the handle and one with a stronger detent. Um, you got to kind of pinch the handle a little more than most knives when you go to middle finger flick this. So I'm kind of pinching it down here with my thumb and my palm. I'm pinching it a lot harder. Well, not a lot harder, but considerably harder than other knives when I go to middle finger flick to kind of push that blade out. So you got to get used to that. Um, but both are doable. Uh, and like I said, it really comes down to your preferences on detent strength when you get into the deployment options. But overall, <laughs> what we have here is... I'm going to say it. I don't think this is a true EDC knife. I would not EDC this knife. But that doesn't mean, just because a knife is not a great EDC knife, doesn't mean it's not a great knife. Um, and it is still a very good knife, very solid knife, in terms of a material standpoint, an action standpoint, a quality standpoint. Um, just not, it just, to me, it's just not your everyday banger, you know? 
but what it is, is a very cool knife. It's one I would recommend if you want something that's just a little more out there. Like, you know, you got a bug out, you got a pair of three, you want something different. You want something that's really gonna just stand out. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's, it's a great option. Um, and it is one that is gonna stick around for me because I do truly enjoy this knife. Uh, let me know what you guys think on the overall design and, and vibes of this knife. But you, it, you still, I mean, you get the Kaiser quality, you get the good materials, you get a reasonable price, 119 bucks. Actually, I think very reasonable. Um, so not a whole lot of complaints for it. Let me know what you guys think. Really hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.